Hello, this is uh, Hooded Wanderer from Modern American Shamanism, The Well of Knowledge. Uh, I'm doing another free online video, and this one is on uh, Blood Brother Ritual slash Oath. Now, in the last video, we I rambled on about oaths because I take the concept of oaths very seriously, so I probably rambled on a little bit too long. Um, now, the, we did the oaths last time because a Blood Brother Ritual slash Oath is like a regular oath on steroids. Uh, and the reason that is, um, when you do a blood brother ritual, okay, uh, that we're going to get into, that person you've sworn an oath as a blood brother, they come before everything. And I mean everything. They come before your family. They come before your wife. If you got a newborn child, sorry, the blood brother comes before your newborn child. Um, if uh, your blood brother gets injured or killed and you'd sworn to avenge him, you have to jump on a plane and travel halfway around the world if need be to avenge his injury or his death. Okay? Oath on steroids. Uh, so, what do you need for a blood brother ritual? You need a shovel and a spear. And it has to be done outside in the woods. So, it's not apartment friendly. It's not downtown friendly. It's probably not even suburbia friendly. Nothing weird goes on, well, depending on your definition of weird, but nothing really weird goes on, but uh, it, I'm going to explain why it has to be done in the woods, okay? Uh, um, also, before we start, I want to remind everybody that we have no idea where modern heathenry would be today if Christianity hadn't stepped in a thousand or so years ago and foobarred everything. So telling somebody that they're doing something wrong, saying something wrong, or don't know what they're doing because it's not what you would do is not right because we have no idea what they would do. They might not be doing anything like this today. We don't know. But what we do at Modern American Shamanism and the Well of Knowledge, uh, excuse me, is um, we dig up the information of where our ancestors, Northern Europeans, you know, Germany, Iceland, Scandinavia, Denmark, where they left off, where we can verify that they left off, like with this Blood Brother ritual. It's from the Gisli Saga. I can't promise I'm pronouncing that correctly. G-I-S-L-I -I Saga. Um, and we take that platform and we move on from there. That way, we feel, Crow Spirit and I, I feel that we're on the right track from where they left off so that we can 21st century it um, in a more positive fashion uh, by knowing where they were and not trying to create something or trying to be stuck in the past. So we kind of like walk the midline there. Okay, so um, moving on. Coffee and Blood Brother Ritual. Why it has to be outside in the woods because you have to find two saplings. And you judge the height of the saplings you need by the tallest person in the ritual. So what you do is you find two saplings that are close to each other, that are the appropriate height. You bend the tops over gently and you tie them together. And now the tallest person there has to be able to fit under there comfortably without uh, slouching or bending over. So that's, again, how you judge the trees. Then when it's over, you untie the trees and you let them go back to where they were. You don't damage the trees in any way. You don't cut them down. You don't burn ruins on them or anything. You just leave them alone. You bend them over, tie them up. Uh, do your ritual and let them go. Then, the next thing you do once you've got the trees tied together, you grab that shovel and you dig a small hole. It doesn't have to be any specific dimensions, at least it doesn't say so. It doesn't have to be three feet deep or ten feet wide. It's just a small hole. So yeah, I guess you can use a little gardening trowel, excuse me, or a shovel. Then what you do is everybody gets under this the uh, the arch way around the hole and you set the spear next to the hole one person's holding it and then everybody takes turns cutting their finger or their hand however you want to do it be careful mixing blood you know everything going on uh, bloodborne pathogen warning and everything don't uh lick each other don't intentionally mix your blood and all that other stuff don't get your blood on anybody else and don't let their blood get on you um so what everybody does they they put a small cut in their hand and then they take turns specifically says one at a time so that made me think they've got some bloodborne pathogen knowledge and uh you put a few drops of blood into the hole that you dug 
Okay, and once everybody's done that, you take the bottom of the spear and kind of gently stir all the blood together. Oh, excuse me. All right. Then the last thing that you do is everybody, I'm going to blow some people away here because they say we never do this, but it specifically says in the Gizla saga, you get down on one knee and you swear this oath to everybody individually in the, uh, in the group, whether it's one other person or 20 of you, however many you can fit under this, uh, the archway. Uh, if I remember correctly in the Gizli saga, it was like three or four people. Um, and I'm going to say something about that here in a minute too. But anyway, you're down there, you're swearing these oaths of blood brothers to everybody. If, uh, if you agree beforehand, you can say like, um, uh, if, uh, something happens to me, I need you all to run out and avenge me. And somebody else can say something else. And if everybody agrees to that, you swear that you say that as an oath while you're down on one knee, swearing these blood brother ritual oaths back and forth. Okay. And what makes it even more binding is you you call down or swear to the appropriate gods to come down and be witnesses for this ritual so now you've got gods hanging out witnessing this ritual you know to see if you're going to live up to your oath and what kind of person you are and uh, what kind of orlog you choose and what kind of weird you set for yourself and how you your weird inner mixes with other people other people's so a lot of interesting stuff going on in the heathen tradition so, and once you've done that, let's say everybody gets up and you untie the tree and you're done. You've sworn a blood brother uh, ritual oath thingy. Um, now, the important thing to remember is in the Gizli saga, one of the guys in there, he actually backs out at the last second. He's like, because uh, one or more of the other individuals, they're all like, I need you to avenge me if I die. And he, he's just like, said, nope, I'm out of this. A loose translation. He says, I'm out of here because I got people of my own to take care of and I ain't got time to you know run around the world killing people because you guys were goofy um so people do have backed out of a blood brother oath in the middle of the ritual so that is evidently okay it proves that you need to really think what you're doing through before you do something it's not a goofy ritual it's not a wiccan thing it's oh I probably shouldn't have said that but anyway it's um it's very serious and it should be taken very seriously. That part of the ritual you need to make hold on to and not alter for yourself. It's an oath that needs to be done very specifically. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you find it very interesting. See you all later.